Um, just make sure there's no obstacles around you uh, so that you can work out comfortably and we'll get started. Uh, so Pilates is about really good body awareness. So it's, a, it's really about keeping your mind in tune with your body. And it's a really good way to help build your strength and, and to help really connect and protect your body. We always start with a posture alignment because this gives us our good body awareness. So we're trying to tune to the, uh, to the body, to how our body is placed in space and, and to how we can position it so that we're in the most balanced posture we can be in. So we start with the base and we work our way up. So we're checking that our feet are about hip width apart, that we're not turning the feet out or in, so they're nice and centered. So I like to use the outside of my foot as a guide. So we're checking that um, there's a nice straight line there. And then if you close your eyes and just feel through the foot, you want to feel just a nice even distribution of weight. So we're not rolling out or in on the ankles. And just tune to how that feels, whether that feels like it's outside of your habit or it's maybe a little bit more comfortable. Maybe it takes a bit of pressure off the ankles. And once our feet are set, we tune to the knees. And all we're going to do with the knees is shake them and make sure there's a little softness in them. So the softness in the knees connects us to our leg muscles. And this should create a sense of grounding. So we're really tapping into our leg strength here. The next part, and a lot of the focus on Pilates is through the center of the body. So a lot of people think of Pilates as, as being an abdominal workout. Um, so we do focus a lot through the center of the body because a lot of Pilates is about protecting the spine. So if I turn the side on, you know, check through the spine position. So what we want to do is stack through the base of the vertebrae. So we do this by bringing our pelvis into neutral. So we're making sure that our hips aren't sitting back or they're not sitting forward. So we're not clenching the buttocks at all. So we're just nice and in the middle. There's no pressure through the center of the body. And we want to lift up through the spine and feel nice and long and a little bit light through the torso. So it's from this position that we get the best activation through the, through the deeper core muscles. So these are the transverse abdominus, and what they do is they wrap around the spine and they act as our body's anchor through the center of the body. So to switch on these muscles, we're gonna to tune to where the hip bones are, and we're gonna visualize a line going from one hip bone to the other. And then what we do is we lightly scoop the belly behind the line, this lower belly. And we do this without moving the spine. So you'll notice just a subtle draw in. And if you tune to the breath, it's, we're still able to breathe with ease. So we're not really sucking the belly in. We're not trying to tighten and tense the body. It's very, very light. And if we tune to the waist, we've got this lateral gap through it. Now we're going to relax the arms by the sides and turn the palms in. So this is often enough to open through the top of the body. So we're thinking of opening the chest very lightly and we're stacking through the vertebrae between the shoulder blades. Now the final phase is the neck and the head. So what we want to do is we want to remember that we want the neck, the vertebrae through the neck in line with rest of spine. So this means our head stays within our center of gravity. So it's not sitting forward. It's not tucking back, creating tension in the center of on the front of the neck. So really what we're aiming to do is have the head within our center of gravity. So if you close your eyes and just make sure the weight's not being pulled forward or back, the neck muscles feel relaxed because the head is centered and the neck doesn't have to work as hard. Now just get a sense of your whole body in space and tune to how it feels to stand here. You may have noticed that some of the parts of the posture have already reverted back to your habits and that's okay, but give them a bit more attention. So part of the practice, it's not about mastering your posture the first time you do this. It's about the awareness. So through the awareness, we create change. So as you tune to your body, tune to the different parts of the posture, 
We're going to start to incorporate what we call a blood is breath. So this breath is a deep breath in through the nose. And the exhale is a sigh out through the mouth. And you can hear that that's quite audible or ocean sound to the breath. So we'll try that again. Deep breath in through the nose. Then we exhale, we sigh out through the mouth. So it's a nice, slow, sustained exhale. So we try to connect movement to this breath and this pace of the breath. So we're going to practice this with a spinal roll. So we take a deep breath in. We scoot the belly in. We're going to hinge the weight a little to the toes because this keeps the core engaged. And then we use the full out breath to roll through the vertebrae of the spine. We take an inhale at the bottom. And then we use the out breath to roll all the way up to the top. We'll try this again. Inhale. Hinge forward and use your out breath to come down. Inhale. Exhale, we come all the way up. And we'll try this one more time just to the pace of your own breath. Now just take a moment just to assess your posture. Tune to whether you came back to your Pilates posture. Okay, and then we'll take a transition down to our mat. So to transition, we come through a deep squat. Um, this perhaps isn't for people that have back problems, knee problems, so or, or just don't feel comfortable with deep squats. Uh, so if that's you, just find your own way and your own comfortable way down to your mat. But otherwise, if you're quite happy to move to a deep squat, we take a deep breath in, take the arms up, scoot the belly in, and then exhale, we sit the hips down towards the mat, and then take your left hand back, followed by the right, and gently sit down. Yeah. So we're going to cross our legs with our left leg in followed by right. And we're sitting tall through the spine. And we're going to do just a few warm-up exercises through the torso because a lot of the movements we do do involve the centre of the body. So we're placing our hands on our shins or our ankles or just wherever you're comfortable. We relax the neck and shoulders. And we check that the chin stays in. So we want to make sure that we're not moving our head with the movement. So the head is going to stay level. When we inhale, we move forward, we open the chest and shoulders. So there's a slight draw in through the shoulder blades. And then exhale, we tuck back. And we're moving to the rhythm of the breath. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Good. So just keep moving to this rhythm. Making sure we're not tensing the arms. The arms aren't guiding the work. All the movement is in the center of the body. And if you feel comfortable just for this movement, we can increase the tempo a little bit. Let's try four more. And come back to center. Exhale, release the breath. Good. Now, if you want to change your legs over, you're welcome to. We're going to rest the knees this time, the hands rather, on the knees. And we call this a Sufi grind. So we're going to take an inhale and circle the body forward. Then exhale, we round the spine and circle back. Inhale forward. 
exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. So just keep moving to the rhythm of the breath. Hopefully what you're feeling is lots of sensation through the center of the body. So sometimes with these mindful practices, it is good every now and then just to close your eyes and focus more on the feeling of the movement. So we're not, we are a little concerned with, with how the movement appears, but most of the focus is on the sensation. Your body will tell you um, whether the range you're working feels good to the body, um, whether we're targeting the right parts of the body. And this works better just with those feeling cues rather than just visual cues. So we're going to pause and we're going to move back the other way. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, exhale back. So relax the neck and shoulders. There's no tension. The head's not moving much. The chin's staying at that one level so that we're not stimulating the neck. And we're going to do it just three more times. And then we're coming back to center. Good. And just a little movement through the neck and the head before we come down to our back. So from here, we're going to check that the shoulders do stay down. We take the right ear towards the right shoulder. So I always do even mirror image, so it's your right. And then we bring the chin down to the chest. And then take the left ear to the left shoulder. Checking as I shrug. And then again, chin to chest. Ear to shoulder, chin to chest, ear to shoulder. Now, if this feels okay, what you might do is choose a direction and take a full circle. So when they do this, if it feels good on the neck, I do recommend you move quite slowly just so that it does feel good through all those muscles through the neck. Relax the jaw, especially as the head tips back. And just a couple more times this direction. Your breathing is just going to your own rhythm. You can inhale as the head goes down, exhale as the head goes back. Or if it feels more natural to do it the other way around, you're welcome to do this. Now pause when the chin comes back down to the chest and we'll go the other way. Again, making sure no shrugging whatsoever. So shrugging will tighten the neck and the aim is to loosen and stretch. Again, focus on the sensation of the movement. It should feel good to do. There should be no pain, no agitation whatsoever. Maybe one more circle. And then bring chin to chest and recouple. All right, so now we make our transition down to the mat. So what you're going to do is turn your feet to one short side of the mat. So whatever feels comfortable, it doesn't matter which direction. Um, and I do this with straight legs because it makes my core work just a little bit harder. But if you do have any back issues, I do recommend you come down with that knee so you just have a little bit more support. You can also hold underneath the thighs to come down. But what we're going to do is a really slow spinal roll to come down onto our back. So the hands come up, we take a deep breath in, and then exhale, we come a little way down, and then we pause. <laughs> Inhale, exhale, come a little further down. And pause. Inhale. Exhale, come so lower back's almost in contact with the mat. And take an inhale. And take five counts to lower. Five, four, three, two, and one. Well done. Hands come down by sides. So now we set what we call our base posture. So this is the starting point for all of our mat-based exercises. So we bend our knees up and we're going to place our feet close to our hips and hip width apart just like we did standing. And just like we did standing, we don't turn the feet out of range. So we want to make sure they're nice and centered. 
Uh, if we look at the knees, the knees mirror the feet, so they're not flopping out, they're not flopping in, uh, they're quite centered as well. And just feel through the feet, so you want to feel um, like there's a little bit of weight in them, so that we are using the, the lower body, it's active. Now we tune to the centre of the body, and this is quite a big focus as we lie on our back, um, because the spine position is, is very important. So what we're wanting to do with the spine is we want to make sure that it is touching the mat, okay? But it's a light touching, so we're not pressing the body. And when we, but we don't want the gap, so any gap, even a little gap under the spine makes it difficult to hold the deep core up. Um, and then what happens is, is we use our lower back muscles. So this is often when we feel pain through the lower back. So we want to press very, very lightly. And I like to do this thing, it's called a diamond test. So what you do is you make a diamond with the thumb and the index fingers, and you place the diamond on the pelvis, so make sure it's not on your belly, it is on the pelvis. So heels are the hands on the hip bones. And your diamond should feel flat and level. So if it's not level, so if the thumb's higher, this usually means that you've got lots of arch under the back. Or if the index finger's high, it generally means we're starting to tuck and clench the buttocks. Um, we don't want that because this throws the spine out as well. We just want to settle and be in the middle. So remember our nice posture when we were standing, how the vertebrae stacked? This brings us to that same position. So this is the position we hold. And if we switch on the deeper core, just like we did before, so we find the hip bones, we imagine the line from one hip bone to the other, and we scoot the belly in behind the line, we don't actually move the spine. So this just holds it in place. We haven't moved the body at all. Um, so that way we're maintaining the integrity of our posture. So we're not actually hollowing out anything through the center of the body. Uh, we're just wanting those deeper muscles to stay switched up. And of course, I like to just point out at this, this point in time that we, we can breathe in this position. So if you found that you are holding your breath, um, just make sure you do have a little bit of flow to the breath right now. So with our arms, we're going to take them by the sides. And this might be a challenge for quite a few of you. We want the palms up. So palms up opens our chest, and it's a nice way to release uh, tension from the neck, chest, and shoulders. So often this is where we hold a lot of our tightness in our body. So we're encouraging the shoulders to open out, the palms up. The, the heads don't have to be close. They can be a little bit further apart. And then I, I probably will turn my head quite a lot to look at you, uh, but ideally, and, and you might be the same, but ideally we want the nose in line with navel and the chin tuck subtly so that we're maintaining the position of the neck and the head. So this brings us into centre. So before we move, we're going to take a deep breath into the nose. Exhale, sigh the breath out. And then we'll do this again. Inhale. Exhale. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Good. So we're going to start with a very, very basic movement. But what we're trying to do is really tune into the center of the body and make sure there's no movement. So this exercise is about anchoring through the center of the body. We'll move the legs, but the legs aren't the focus. It's all about the stillness through here. And you'll find a lot in Pilates. A lot in Pilates is about what we don't move. It's not about what we do with. Uh, so it's, it's sort of hard to get your head around sometimes. So we take a deep breath in, scoot the belly, take an exhale and maintain that connection. And then we're actually going to start on the inhale. So we inhale, we lift the right leg up and we do it without moving the other leg, without rocking through the hips and without lifting the spine. So we're keeping that core connected. And then exhale, we're going to place our foot back to hip with the path. So try and stay tuned with where your feet come back to because they will, they'll try and sneak closer together. Other side, inhale up, exhale. So this is just a little test to see one thing, how balanced you are to the left and right sides of the body. So if there's any weakness or tightness through areas of the lower back, 
you might find one side is harder than the other. It's usually opposite side to the, to the leggy left. So moving with the breath, inhale, exhale. And our movements in Pilates are quite slow. So we do move to the rhythm of the breath. The reason they're slow, one thing it works the core harder. So it's a lot harder to slow down and try and hold this part of the body still, the core. But another reason, it's so we have that awareness. So we're, we are aware in Pilates of how each movement affects the body. So it's not just about moving. It's about conscious movement. So one more time. As I said, this is just a little bit of a test. So what we're going to do now is reverse the action. So if you're quite comfortable bringing your knees up to this 90 degree position, um, please join me. If you're very, very tight in the hips, you might choose to stay with what we, what we just did. So we're coming here. We brace, we make sure the back stays down throughout this movement. Take an inhale. On the exhale, we tap the big toe down to the floor, the right side. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale. Exhale. Now, if your back is holding and you're feeling strong, you might take the foot a little further away. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, good. So keep going with this movement. Make sure that, again, stay true to the movement by making sure that the spine doesn't lift. Any lifting is an indication that the core isn't holding. So it's not an effective movement. And once the core stops holding, the movement goes straight to the lower back. So this is when we get archy. And I do get a lot of people tell me that they have this natural curve in the spine so they can't get their back down. Um, but what it generally is, it's generally an imbalance. So it generally means a lot of weakness in the core and a lot of tightness in the lower back. Um, so often what that lifting is telling you, it's telling you to modify the exercise. So it's not necessarily telling you it's a, it's a structural uh, aspect to your posture. So we're just going to do a couple more. And then we're going to test our coordination skills. So we're going to take the arms up now. So this makes it more challenging to hold the lower back down. So, but same rule, the lower back's going to stay down. So we're going to opposite arm to legs. So we take an inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. So even the slightest arch in the lower back is too much. And often this movement, it's not actually that lower part of the body that causes the arching. It's often tightness through the lats and the upper body. So if you're very tight in your shoulders, um, you might find that when your hands go overhead, what you get is your back pulling away from the mat. Uh, so what I recommend then, is you modify it. So maybe don't take the arm all the way down. And this again, keeps you true to the exercise. So it means you're gonna get the benefits of the core work rather than arching the back and compensating by using the lower back. So let's do four more, so two more each side. And then coming back to center and just hug the knees in. Okay. All right, let's try something a little bit more challenging, shall we? So the hands are up. We call this the frog. So we bring the knees in. The feet are going to come together for this and they're going to splay out Charlie Chaplin's stuff. So you'll notice as your feet turn that the knees open a little. So you're pointing them in the direction of the armpits. Now this movement can be done at different levels. 
the higher you push to the ceiling, the easier it is because the feet are closer to our center of gravity. When we move the feet away from our center of gravity, this is when we start to feel a lot more pressure through the center of the body. So what we need to check is that we can hold the core. And so remember the test for holding the core means the back is down in contact with the mat. So we'll try a few just at a moderate um, level. So this is about 45 degrees. So you're pushing on a slight angle to put a little bit of load through the center of the body and then coming back in. So we exhale, push out. Inhale, draw back in. Exhale, out. Inhale, back in. Again, exhale out, inhale in. Exhale out. Now we're going to add on a little bit. So we're going to add the upper body. So exhale out, and we're going to lift the upper body up. So tuck your chin in, hands by side, relax the neck. And then inhale, we come down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. So now we add on to exhale, come up. So this is a little harder. Inhale, drop the feet just slightly, it might even be a millimeter. Exhale, come up. And then inhale, lower down. Again, exhale, squeeze the inner thighs together. So you're getting a little inner thigh work. Inhale, down. Exhale up, and then inhale, release. Exhale, inhale, low. Exhale up, inhale, release. Exhale, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, making sure that back is staying down to the mat. Again, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, let's do it two more. Just the rhythm of your breath. I'll let you do these. Don't rush them. And relax, slow down. Good. All right, we're going to move um, and change our position a little. So we're actually coming onto our side now. Uh, so we come onto the side. So we change the posture slightly when we're on the side. So the palm's gonna be up. We're resting the ear on the bicep. So this keeps our chin in. Yes, we do a posture alignment. So we're always concerned about the positioning of the body. So the feet stack. Um, I like to have my feet just slightly in front of the body. So what this does, it creates a really subtle C shape with the body. Um, so this helps our balance. So if we're here, it's often hard to maintain the balance of our posture. So feet slightly forward, just anchors you a little bit more. Um, still flex the feet um, as they're stacked, just so we keep them active. So they're not, we're not doing anything through the ankle and supporting any um, um, posture deficits. We want to check that the hips are stacked. So we're not letting one hip come forward. Same with the shoulders. Shoulders are relaxed. Uh, and as we said, this head's going to stay here. Um, the hand will help you balance, so you might want to place it there just for now while we set up. And we want to, again, bring a lot of attention to the centre of the body. So just like we have been doing. One hip bone to one hip bone, we imagine the line, we scoot the belly in behind the line, so then we're still maintaining that gap through the waistline. Now there's one little step, one more step that while we're on our side. So what we want to do here is draw the waist a little away from the mat. So we're actually creating a gap. So this, so the core has lots of different components that help draw in and support the spine. Uh, so this is this helps this process, but what it also does 
it helps maintain the length of the spine. So if we just let the side of the body relax into the mat, and see, all right, my, my head wants to, to push up. You can imagine that little <laughs> curve shape happening, not in the right direction of our spine. Uh, so we do want to make sure that the spine keeps its length. So this is what this gap does. So we're just going to relax the head for now. Um, I've been super nice to you today, <laughs> just by the way. <laughs> so I'm sure we'll, we'll progress a lot of these exercises over the week. Um, so what we're going to do is lift the top leg, hold your balance, and then we're going to lift the top arm. Take a deep breath in and scoot the belly. On the exhale, we're going to curl up. So we see how I lift my head, and we're going to try to bring the elbow to the knee. And then inhale, we stretch the side of the body out. Again, exhale, come up, inhale, lower down. So we're conscious movement, we're not cheating, we're not letting other areas of the body compensate. So often we'll do this with this exercise by just moving the arms and legs and not bringing the upper body in, or we'll use the elbow to lift. So we're going to stay nice and in line and let our core to the work. So we're now working obliques through the side of the body. So these are the muscles to the waist. They help with this side bend movement. They also help in rotation. So when obliques are strong, they help to protect your lower back. So we're going to try a few reps with the bottom foot up. So what this does, it adds an element of balance, and you will find your glutes and muscles through the buttocks now have to work a little bit harder. The conscious movement, focus on the feel of it, not how you think it should look. Is it targeting through the waist? Or where are you feeling it? If you're feeling neck, you might find you have to reposition the head a little. Maybe you need to lift the head up. Maybe you're leaving it behind. Good, two more times. And we're going to play with something that we haven't tried out today. So this is called a percussive breath. So what it does, we sigh the breath out on a pulse and it helps release all the air. So we actually get a little bit more contraction through the muscles. So it goes like this. And again. And you'll notice on that pulse that I actually pulse through my torso. So that I get the most amount the most I can out of those oblique muscles. So if I just pulse through the arms and the legs like this, I'm, I'm probably going to get a tiny little work at my shoulder, but not much of anything else. Again, and again. Four more times. And again, two more times. Last one. And relax, good. Let's try the other side, shall we? So we're gonna spin all the way around just so you get to place your screen so you can see what's happening. So coming all the way into the side, same posture check. Yes, we always go through that. So if the posture's not in line, uh, it's really hard to do Pilates. It, we're not actually performing Pilates. So remember the alignment is key. So if, if the body's out of alignment, um, any imbalances we have or any habits we have where we compensate through the body. So compensation happens when we have stronger muscle groups and weaker muscle groups. So what happens is because certain muscle groups are weak, other muscles become dominant and, and often take over movements. Um, so what Pilates is trying to do is not allow that to happen. So good alignment helps that process. So we're coming down. The palm is up, so this opens your shoulder. Um, by the way, if you have difficulty with this position, you can take the arm in front, but you might want a little towel or something through the head to support you. Feet are stacked and slightly forward, so we're balanced. The hips and the shoulders are stacked. The chin is in, so that ear is on the bicep. And my head is here just to, just to help my balance out. 
Now tuning to center of the body. Yes, make sure you have that deeper core on. So the hip bones and the line going from one hip bone to the other and then scoop the belly in. And remember that extra step while you're on your side is to draw the waistline up. And this is something we try and maintain throughout the exercise. Um, yes, as we crunch it a lot, but we need to come back to position. So we're lifting the top leg. We're lifting the top leg. We're scooping in and we take an inhale. And then exhale, we curl up. Good, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, so we're shortening the gap between the rib and the hip. This is the most important aspect of the movement. It's not actually about touching your elbow to your thigh. It's about getting that little side bend through the waist. Without the side bend, there's, there's no oblique work happening. So we're bringing our head up again. Just make sure that you're not feeling too much tension in the neck. Um, if you're having a lot of issues with neck or if neck is an issue for you, you might just want to do a few reps and take a break and then rejoin us. Again, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, good again. And remember our percussive breath, inhale, take a triple pulse up, inhale, exhale, inhale, Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. I'm going to let you do these next three reps by yourself. So just really tuning to your body, tuning to the sensation of the movement. onto a belly for the next part. Alright, so just a couple of exercises here. Um, when we're on the belly, <laughs> a lot of people think the main thing we focus on is the lower back. Usually with a lot of us, that, that's not so much what we want to do. Um, and I say this more so to the people that have very pronounced curves in the spine. So if it's your natural, or you believe it's your natural posture, there's <laughs> more to the point, where you do this, where you've got this big arch in the back, um, these are some good exercises for you to get that balance. So the balance um, occurs by strengthening the glutes. Okay, so, so we're going to focus quite a bit on the glute work. But also the posture work. So this is, also, this is for the people and probably most of us um, at, in this current climate where we're on computers all the time. So if you're very, very tight through the shoulders, the chest, and you feel your posture is here a lot, so if you're on a computer a lot, uh, this, these exercises also help with the posture work. So it's helping to open the chest and shoulders, strengthen a little bit of these posture muscles between the shoulder blades. So that's the focus as we come down. So we're coming down onto the belly. Make sure that your feet aren't turning out or in. So does it, if you're very tight the calves, you might feel uncomfortable having the tops of your feet to the mat that you can tuck but the main aim is to have the feet centered so we're not flopping the ankles out of it so just make sure the ankles are not working too hard basically uh, i'm just going to rest my hands here for now um tune to your hips and your legs so the legs want to be centered so again so feet aren't turning hopefully it means the thighs aren't turning but just focus in on that so that they are centered but the hips, this is something very important. So what we want to do is press the pelvis down. So if your hips lift away from the mat, um, <laughs> often this indicates very, very tight hamstrings. But what it also does, it puts all the load through your lower back. Um, so what we're wanting to do is really focus on getting the hips down. So it might even mean there is a very, very slight activation through these glute muscles through the buttocks. Um, so the aim is to strengthen there. So this is okay. Um, and the, the glutes, a lot of the time when we're on our belly, 
these are our anchor for our posture. So yes, it's the core through the center of the body, but the glutes will anchor the pelvis. So we need to think about it in this position. Now the upper body, so um, to start with, we're gonna take the hands here. So bending my palms are down um, and just relax through the fingers. Try to relax the neck. So we wanna draw the shoulders away from the ears and imagine your shoulder blades that they're sliding down your back, so down towards your hips. So this will stop this shrugging sensation. So the last thing we want to do is sh shrug and make the neck tighter. So I, I don't know anyone that needs to make their neck muscles any tighter. We want to actually have this length and this release through the muscles here. So we're going to connect our fingertips to the forehead. The, the my nose hovers slightly off the mat. Um, and ideally, we do want to be looking down at the mat so the head's not turning. You might have to look at the screen occasionally if that's okay. But, but try and centre the head as much as you can. Um, so nose off the mat just makes it a little bit more comfortable. And we're just going to add a little lift. So we're lifting up through the upper body on the inhale this time. So you scoot the belly in, inhale, lift up. The pelvis is pressing down. We're not lifting too high. And then exhale, we lower down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. So my palms are now facing the floor. Okay. In, exhale. That's going to be important in a moment. Inhale, lift. Exhale. So what I'm going to add, inhale as I lift, I'm going to open my arms and have some way I hips. I my hips lower. And then exhale, I lower all the way down. Inhale, lift. So notice I have turned my hands up or down. They're just facing the floor. Yeah, the palms. And then exhale, lower. So what that means, if the palms keep facing the ground, uh, what it does, it means that we're actually opening the shoulder. So we're going through this movement. Brother, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're moving through the shoulder blade. And we're trying to keep the neck and the shoulder relaxed. So we're tuning to the posture muscles. If I turned my hand, can you see how it rounds my shoulder? So it actually closes off my chest. And it actually makes, it makes the movement feel a little bit awkward. Um, so another thing of Pilates training, easiest part is always better. Okay. So keep going. So we're going to do it four more times just like this. So inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. And one more time. Good. And your legs, slow down. Right. So just have a little bit. So what we're going to do is stack one palm on top of the other and just let the head, so the head gets a little pillow. Um, if the heads are stacked, it means the face will be off the mat. Uh, if your face is suddenly pressing to the mat, probably not going to be very comfortable, so you might want to just make sure the hands, that your hands are stacked a bit higher. Uh, I'm going to move through the lower body now. So the focus is predominantly on the glute muscles. So the muscles through the buttocks, very important for protecting the lower back and stabilizing the pelvis. Uh, so I'm going to do this next exercise with my knees bent. This will not be for everybody. So if you've already come to this position, so my heels are together, I've got my Charlie Chaplin feet again, the soles of my feet face the ceiling. So if you've already done this and suddenly your pelvis is off the mat and your hamstrings are really talking to you and tightening, you can do this next movement with your legs straight. So that means you, you still do the same type of movement, you haven't lost uh, the integrity of the movement, it just means you do it without the, the contraction in the hamstrings. So uh, please feel free to take that option. And if your feet, you can't hold your feet in this 90 degree position, so if they're here, again, I recommend you do it with straight legs as well. So I'm going to, my head is going to be down. I'll probably cheat and look at you, um, but please try and have your head down. We're here, we take a deep breath in. Exhale, so we're going to make sure we have that core connection. We're scooping the belly, we're pressing the pelvis to the mat. That pelvis is not going to leave the mat. Take an inhale, lift your feet up to ceiling. And then exhale, lower. 
inhale, exhale. So we want to do this without tightening the upper body. So close your eyes. Keep breathing. <laughs> and just tune to where do you feel the movement mainly? Is it in the buttocks? Do you feel sensation in the shoulders and the arms? Because what, what a lot of people do, because a lot of us have very weak glutes, we tend to um, dominate a lot through our hips, through our quadriceps, um, and through the upper body, so through our arms, our shoulders. Uh, so what happens is if, if the glutes are, are weak, we compensate through areas of the body we don't necessarily um, associate with moving the lower body. So you might find you've lifted your knees, and you're really, really pressing to your arms to get them higher. So this is a compensation. So it means we're, we're trying to get height. We're trying to get height by pressing the arms down. So what we're going to do is just relax the arms. So find a way to make the upper body completely relaxed and inactive. Doesn't matter if your knees lift a millimetre. Remember, it's about the integrity of the exercise. So this means that we want the glutes working. We want them doing the work. If the glutes know, so if they're the weaker muscle and they know that they that another area will help them out, they'll continue to stay weak and lazy. So we want to make sure that they don't do that. They wake up, they're here, they're ready to work. So we're going to do it four more times with just the glutes working, but be very, very conscious and do these four reps in your own time. Inhale up, exhale, release. Inhale up, exhale, release. And one more time, inhale, exhale, and let it go. Good. All right, so this is the fun part. This is where we put it all together. So we're bringing our hands back, it's um, separated so they're not stacked anymore. The fingertips are touching the forehead, the knees are here. So we take an inhale, so press the pelvis down, maybe just take next up for fun, <laughs> scoot the belly in, and then inhale, we lift the upper body, we take the arms out. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower down. Inhale. Exhale. So again, four more times, tune to your body. Where do you feel the movement? Make sure that your head does lift, so there's no tension on the neck. There's no pulling on the back of the neck by leaving the head behind. One more time. And release, well done. So we're going to take our hands by side. Um, this time the palms can be up. And let's take our left ear down to the mat and take some deep breaths. So deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, side breath out. And again, inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Good. We take the hands under shoulders. You're going to push up onto your hands and knees. So take the hands um, directly on the shoulders, and the knees are about hip width. And then we're going to take a little counter stretch. So it's called a cat stretch. So just make sure your feet aren't going in so they're nice and centered. Exhale, round up. Relax the tension of the neck and really get this movement from the right inside of the body. We hold it and breathe. Let the neck and the hip go. Good. Coming to center, so neutral spine. You bring your big toes together, the knees are going to come apart. We take the hands forward and we sit to the heels or as close to the heels as we can. 
and bring your hands down to the mat. So this is called a shell stretch. It is a counter stretch um, for what we've just done with the back work. If you're down here and you find your head can't touch the floor, what I recommend you do is just stack your fist one on top of the other and just let the head come down. So the, the shell stretch is really just a counter stretch to relax. And release. Yeah. All right, so a little bit of a challenge now. <laughs> so this next exercise, we're on our hands and knees. So uh, there's a few things to be really mindful of when we're in this position. One's not locking the elbow, so you don't want to make sure that we're not turning the, the inside of our elbow towards that short end of the mat. So that the inside of the elbow should be facing each other. We want to put a little weight into the index finger and thumb. So a lot of people, when they have their hands flat to the mat, um, they, they tend to roll to their little finger and this creates tightness and, uh, and a bit of soreness in the wrist. So pressing to the thumb and the inner part of the hand really helps that. We want even weight. So if we're a little weak in the upper body, sometimes we tend to favour legs. But if you're a little tight to your hamstrings, sometimes we do the opposite when we're a little forward. So just find the middle. Now, the, for the important part, the spine. So the two main things to be mindful of with the spine position uh, is this um, scoop. So we want to make sure that this part of the back stays stacked and level. So what tends to happen is if we're a little weak in the core, we come to this position. So we just let the core go. Okay, and this will cause tightness and soreness in the lower back. So we're, we're scooping, we're holding, the other thing, and probably the more common thing that I'll remind you of, is the neck of the head. So what we tend to do is we get a little bit lazy because a lot of us compensate, again, through the tighter muscles. So tighter muscles are the ones that are overdeveloped. And remember these, neck, shoulders, chest from this posture. So what tends to happen if you're someone on your computer all day, you'll do a few reps and your head will drop to this position, um, which might be a habit but it's very bad for the balance in the neck and very bad, like cause a lot of neck pain. So we're going to bring the neck and the head in and up. So we want to make sure we've got this tuck in the chin. So this way the neck is in line with the rest of my spine. So I'm not looking up, I'm just holding the neck in line. Um, it might take a little bit of time to, to stay in tune with that, but I do recommend you assess it just every now and then in the movement. So what we're going to do, we're preparing for a bear crawl. So we're going to tuck the toes under, take a deep breath in, scoot the belly, and without lifting your hips higher than shoulders, you're going to exhale, lift your knees off the mat. So just holding this posture, and we're going to take five breaths. Deep breath in, exhale. So notice my hips are not in the air. They are low. Exhale. Try to keep the head up. Again, one more breath, and then lower the knees to the mat. Good. Let's try that again. So we take a deep breath in, exhale, lift up, and then this time, so you can choose the little breathe, but this time I'm going to start to move the feet. So inhale, exhale, tuck a little forward. Inhale back. Exhale forward. Inhale back. Exhale forward. And notice again, have it with my hips. One more each side. And Good. Okay, just give you the wrist a little shake if you need it. Um, one more level. So you don't have to do this. If you found it was enough of a challenge, just lifting your knees off the mat and breathing, stay with that challenge. Um, again, it's about tuning and listening to your body. The best option is the option where you can hold your posture 
with the best integrity. So there's no sense going to a defense option, and I'm going to do that now, <laughs> if your posture is here and doing that. So this is great, but I'm really not getting much of a workout at all. My core does not have to work. So coming into this posture, tucking the toes, take a deep breath in. Excuse me, we remember we're tuning to the head. There's so much to think about. The head, the core, lifting the knees, take a deep breath in. Opposite arm to the leg. Just that tiny movement, less is more. So often it's these subtle movements that are harder to control than if I was to do a really big one. I'm on four more, so two more each side. exercise in, well, two more really. So we're going to um, come out of this posture. So you can either roll across the ankles and roll over the ankles, or you can cheat <laughs> and just sit the hips to one side, bring the feet back around. All right, and we're going to come this time all the way up to the top of the mat. So we're preparing for some Pilates rolling, so this I definitely recommend no obstacles behind you, otherwise it can get a little interesting. So we're bringing our feet together, our knees together. We're going to hold underneath the thighs. The feet can be a little bit away from the body. We want to lift through the spine. So we take an inhale, we open the posture. Exhale, down back. Again, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So this is a little preparation to roll. And if you're at this stage of the class and maybe you've had enough, maybe this feels really good to stay here. But otherwise, what we're going to do is go to a full roll. So for the full roll, we bring our hips a little closer to the feet. We're going to hold the front of the shins. And we bring our, just the tips of the toes to the mat and lift up through the spine. If you can, I'm going to try and lift the feet. So the aim is to try and come back to this position. So it involves a lot more core work here. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, we tuck, drop, roll. Inhale, up and hold. Exhale, roll. Inhale, hold. Exhale, roll. Again. So maybe do two more like this. And then what we can start to do is take the feet away and take a little pause here. Good, four more times. Wonderful luck. <laughs> And then hold here. Let's take five breaths. You can hold the thighs if you need to. Just make sure the spine is nice and straight. Deep breaths in. Now stay and hold, or if you can. Come just a little bit lower. Five breaths. And if you can fill up, hopefully you're still with me. <laughs> Relax, good. All right, so what we're going to do now 
is my cat transition up to standing. So again, I'm gonna come through my deep squat. So just like before, if you don't like the deep squat, just make your own way up as best and as comfortable as you can. So the feet go to shoulder width apart. We bring the weight into the feet. Release the left hand, followed by right. Take a deep breath in and exhale, push. Good. All right, so we're coming onto the mat. We're going to quickly revisit our posture. So this posture is really important. Again, it's for good body awareness. Um, if there's one exercise you take away and practice, let it be this, because this does teach. It's the awareness, but it's the balance through the muscle groups. So again, starting with feet. So a little bit more tuned in now, so it won't take as long this process. The feet are hip width apart. We want to check that line to the outside foot that our feet are centered, so they're not turning. Um, and we want to feel that even distribution of weight through the feet. We change the knees, we make sure they're soft, so we're feeling that grounding, we're connected to our leg muscles. We tune to the spine, so tune from the skeleton around. So on a stack through the base of the vertebrae, so really the pelvis is sitting in the middle, so we're not letting the hips tip back or forward, we're not working the body too hard, and it's fine in the middle. And then we switch on the deeper core muscles. So we tune to the hip bones. We visualize the line going from one hip bone to the other. And we scoot the belly in behind the line without moving the spine or the body. So we have this nice lateral gap through the waist. We are breathing, so check your breath now. So holding the belly is not the same as holding the breath. And feel this lightness through the torso. Now let the hands just come down, turn the palms to your body. So we want to encourage this opening through the chest and the shoulders. Very important now that we're, we're all on screen all the time. So we're opening, we're working through the shoulder blades, we're encouraging this alignment through the spine, through this area of the body. And the final phase, the neck and the head. So remember we want the head within our center of gravity. So we don't want to let it sit forward we don't want to let it tuck back. So we're not creating tension in the front of the neck. The head is centered, the neck muscles are relaxed. So find your posture, feel your posture. So really feel these areas of the body, how it feels to stand here. And let's bring the breath back. So we'll take a deep breath in. Exhale. And again, inhale. Exhale. Let's move through our spine roll. So you might surprise yourself. We revisit this to see if there's any change in how you feel through the body, but also to see if there's any difference in the range. So we take a deep breath in. Scoot the belly, hinge a little forward, and use your out breath to roll down. Nice and slowly. Take an inhale at the bottom. Use the exhale to roll all the way up. Draw the shoulders back and down. Realign the body back to that Pilates posture. Again, hinge forward. Exhale, maybe gauge the range this time. On the way up, consciously tune into those areas of the body we like. So exhale, we'll make sure the feet, the knees, the hips, the spine, the shoulders, the neck and head all come back into position. One more time, inhale, hinge forward, exhale, come down. Take an inhale, exhale, come all the way back up. And last time, last opportunity to assess your posture. And thank you. Thank you for joining me for our first live stream Pilates class. So we'll be offering you a variety of classes through the week. Um, so also one tonight. So there will be a butts and guts class at 5.30 with Karen. So hopefully you join us there. Can continue some of this core work that we've really just started this morning. 
Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.